wild boy, we put your foot in this thing. You didn't get a lot of trouble. Welcome to the episode of JLS Garage and Car featuring today a 2008 Mercedes Benz CLK AMG 63 Black Series. I realize that is a rather long title, but believe me, it has earned every one of those letters and numerals. This is an amazing car, and AMG is sort of like the performance arm of Mercedes Benz back in the day. Uh, kind of the way you had uh, Carroll Shelby with Mustang and you had Yanko with Chevrolet. Uh, AMG would have been the high performance version. You know, when you deal with these big companies, a lot of times they're conservative, so let somebody else kind of do the high performance stuff and, oh, it's working pretty good. All right, let's, let's bring them into the fold. And that's what they've done. The Black Series now, of course, legendary for just incredible performance. So this is one of the very first ones. I have a gentleman here who's had a lot of experience with this car. He used to take pe people out uh, around the tracks to demonstrate how powerful they were. Uh, one of the great racers of all time. He's in the Motorsports Hall of Fame. He's done Le Mans. He's, uh, I think in 97, he won like, boom, 11 races in a row. Is that right, Tommy? There you go. Tommy Kendall, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, if I stood here listening to his credits, it would be longer than the name of this car. So Hello, thanks Jay. for doing this. I appreciate it. And, and you've had experience with this very car, correct? This very car. I have, uh, I have not pampered this car. I've yeah. given a lot of rides around Laguna Seca as part of the AMG Driving Academy. And I actually think I've sold a few of these. Well, they are pretty incredible, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, it's AMG, uh, it was, what you said is true. You know, the two, the A and the M, Alfrek and Melcher, two engineers way back in the day, and then eventually came into the fold. They're kind of like a Roush or a Shelby, and they just kept getting more and more extreme. This, the Black Series, are the most extreme now. You can see the wide body. These cars right. were basically developed as Formula One safety cars, and I think someone got the bright idea, well, we've developed it. Why don't we see if someone will buy them? And it almost sounds like a swear word, Al Frankenmelcher, whatever you can, Al Frankenmelcher. <laughs> it sounds like you're saying something else. But yeah, and, and, and the 63, which really stands for 6.3, here in America, the magic numbers are 427 and 426 for Hemi. In Europe, especially in Germany, 6.3 was about the biggest thing they had back in the day. It was the first really high performance. The first time a V8 was put in a full-size Mercedes sedan and, and raced and rallied. It was and also so, red, so, that yeah, red, that's right. the red pig, they call it, wrote Sau, that raced and won its class at Spa. Right, right. So it, it's a legendary number. And it still looks like a CLK, except for, of course, you've got the flared wheels, fenders. You know, and, and everything's functional. You got quite a bit more cooling when you have 500 horsepower. And then also when you're pacing the Formula One field, you know, you really got to run the car hard. So the diff, extra cooling for the diff and so forth, the wide body. Um, inside, though, it still has the creature comforts. Right. It's uh, still very civilized. And in Germany, it's not like here in America. You can't just take your car and put flares on it, right? I mean, everything there has to be exactly as the manufacturer dictated or has allowed to be done to their automobile, is that correct? Well, yeah, and every new variant has to be go through the full certification, so the, the crash testing and all those things. So you can't just say, oh, let's make a few with wider. Now, they're v very limited production, but uh, right. but they were a, the Black Series are, are the creme de la creme. Now, I'm told you can't even run different tires than what the manufacturer recommends in Germany. Is that true? I... I've heard I, that I, they check to see if you don't have the Z rated or whatever it might be. Oh, we'd have to have the right certification. Right, right. Okay, that makes some sense. I mean, Germans uh, being Germans. Now, this one, has this been restored? This is just a nice original car, huh? Yeah, it's, I mean, if you look close, you can see some of the, the track uh, rock chips and so forth, uh, but it's, it's, it's been put through the paces. So V8, 6.3 liter, about 500 horsepower? Right at 500 horsepower. Um, you know, the regular C-Class 63 back then had 469, so it was right. a boost of about 50. And it, they've just gotten more and more extreme, and that carries forward. This was the second one, the first Black Series that came to the States. There have now been seven. Right. And they just kind of keep ratcheting. You know, it's a big arms race in the, in the performance world. I remember, world. didn't AMG build a car called the Hammer? That was the car, that was pre-Mercedes days when oh, right. they were freestanding. It was AMG, because yes. right? I remember absolutely. getting the mag, because back in the late 80s, it was like a desert. There was no real high performance stuff out there. I mean, the Countach had 450, and that was the end of the world as far as horsepower. And then the, the, the hammer came along, and every magazine went crazy, because it looked like a Mercedes-Benz, lower, a little wider, 
meaner, bigger wheels, and a Four lot cam. of horsepower. Yeah. And very, very fast. It's, it's funny, because I was a kid when those magazines came out, and it was just, it was like my head exploded. So yeah. long before I was a race car driver, you know, things like that right. made me like, oh my God, AMG. And I actually made my dad AMG my mom's, my mom's car back in the day with the body pieces and the wheels. Oh, that's and, funny. Yeah. But it, I mean, that, it's funny though, like Mercedes-Benz is a very conservative company. They just, how you build us something cool and they send it out and then they, oh, okay, people seem to like it. Okay, then you slowly bring them into the fold. I joke that all these cars are pushed through in August when the lawyers are on vacation yeah, <laughs> and yeah. everything shut down. Because when I first drove this car, I was at Willow Springs and I was pretty close to the brand. And so, right. and they said, hey, do you want to go drive the new Black Series? I said, oh yeah, sure. So I showed up out there and I drove and just, I mean, within two corners, how positive the steering was and so yeah. forth. I said, this is no ordinary AMG. I came in, I was breathing hard. I mean, the performance is, is really and next level. 2008, in engineering terms, is a long time ago. Because 500 horsepower was, whew, that was the plateau. Yeah. I mean, that was like a lot of horsepower back in the day. In 2002, I think the most powerful AMG car sold was 340. Right. And so just in those few years, sure. it, it was it had leaped and it's it's an arms race now. So Lee, what so what else constitutes Black Series? We have the flares, we have the motor, brakes upgraded or the stock Mercedes Benz? Uh, I mean literally as big as you can fit under there. Right. They're a, a a composite, you got the aluminum hats with the with the big steel rotors, extra right. brake cooling. Um, it's got the seven speed, uh, it's still an automatic with where it has a lock up on the torque converter, right. seven speed, paddle shift. Um, it's got extra cooling to the diff. Uh, in the back, which is one of the main limiting factors when you, it's one thing to run a car hard for a lap or so, but if you want to run it longer, right. obviously the brake cooling and, and the diff. Now, did trains. AMG make their own calipers as, as well? It says no, these are, these are, I believe these are Brembo. They're oh, AMG, they are Brembo. Okay. AMG branded, but you've got right. a forged, forged wheel here. Um, the, the wide body, it is fully adjustable suspension, so you could uh, you can adjust camber. Um, ride height is even, it's got manual uh, spring perches where you can lower and. Now the CLK, the stock CLK, is the smallest sort of big Mercedes, they may put it that way. It, it's uh, it'd be what, we, what we in America call the midsize, right? It's not, yes. it's not, it's not the S-class size car. It's, it's the next one down, correct? And the CLK was the two-door. They used to, right. now they've gotten rid, they have two-door and four-door variants. Right, right. And they just call them C-class. But right. the CLK referred to the two-door of the C-class. Right, yes. right, right. Well, it's a good, and it's, it's so odd to see a red Mercedes. You just don't, you just don't see that, you know, it's, it's funny. This car only came in four colors. It was red, white, black, and silver. Yeah. And, uh, and even, I, I don't know what the breakdown is, but they're, they're not a lot of red ones. Uh, these cars, again, they came without a lot of fanfare, and so people kind of discovered them later. Right. And they really dipped for a while, and I had my eye thinking, I'm gonna pick one of those up when they were down in the 50s. Well, that, that should that have never sailed. Happened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you didn't, you know, I used to work at a foreign car dealership, that's the call of that, and we had Rolls and Mercedes and everything. And red cars in Boston just sat. People wanted, if it was a roll sand over sable or gray with light gray, black interior. You know, we had a red Rolls that sat in our showroom for a year. We shipped to California, it was sold in two weeks. You know, so it's just the difference, you know. So to, to see a red Mercedes in Boston would be like, who? What is that guy, a fire chief? What's, what's, <laughs> yeah, what, what's, what's going on? The colors changed too. I remember when this car came out white, I was like, eh, white, but white's, white's hot. You know, a yeah. lot of stuff comes in white. So it's funny, funny how that changed. Well, it's fun to see because every car now seems to be white or matte or gray or black, you know, whereas this is, uh, and it's, it's certainly a nice red. The Germans finally got red down. They, their German red used to be orangey. This is like a really nice, and this is not a repaint. This, this, wow, this is a, 13-year-old, 14-year-old paint job just about. Uh, what else have we got here? Okay, and it's seven speed, which is in 2008 was a big deal also, wasn't it? Yeah, that was before, you know, the twin clutch stuff. It was right. starting to show up. A few people had it, but they said for this power level, they didn't have a twin clutch, um, which obviously gives you much quicker, more positive right, right. shifts. But so this one, uh, it's got a couple different modes, but uh, when you have it in manual mode, um, it will, It'll, it'll let you make mistakes, literally. It'll right. hit a rev limiter. Right. Uh, a lot of them, cars, they give you a paddle, but the paddle, it's only an illusion of control. Right, right. And so you can't stretch a gear from one corner to the other. This one you can, you can run it right up to the rev limiter right. and it'll well, hold Well, that's the, the same, but I've got the SLR. 
uh, McLaren yeah. Mercedes. Yeah. And it, there was a lot going on performance-wise of other people doing Mercedes before. Mercedes McLaren, AMG, and it was interesting, interesting. And does this have a back seat? I didn't even check. Does not. No, it does not. So yes. it is, you know, it, I think this is the first one I've seen, in a, at least in a long time. It's, a, it's almost like a smaller BMW size, isn't it? It is. It's a little it, bigger than a BMW, but... The C-Class was what they ran in the DTM series, the German right. Touring. So all the stuff, and that's why their most extreme versions were always done on the C-Class, because yeah. that's what they raced in their domestic touring cars. And so, you know, it, it's funny that uh, the, the wide body, I have a 2012 right. uh, Black Series that I bought new, and uh, the, the wide body, it just it's got kind of this rambunctious, sort of aggressive yeah. uh, feel well, to it. Well, you know, normally I don't like wide body kits on cars, because they look... Mm -hmm. Aftermark, but I mean this flows so nicely. I mean the way it, it's integrated, it, it, it actually looks attractive because the car appears to be a little lower, unless it's just my eyes are off. It's it's adjustable. It so kind of hunkers down, yeah. you know. And of course you got a little lip here at the back. And there's a carbon diffuser. You can see the outlet for the diff cooler here. This. Oh uh, right, yeah. This, this is the outlet to let the air out from the diff cooler. Um, you know. For a while, a lot of the stuff on cars was, was sort of lipstick, and it wasn't right. functional. But now more and more, and when, right. when you get to that, the new GT Black Series, right. I mean, it's, it's like a GT3 car with, uh, with the luxury interior. Yeah, it, it's amazing how far they've come. And, and this, of course, this is the first generation, isn't it? What was the first year for Black Series? Was it 2007, maybe? Uh, the SLK was 05, okay. I believe. And uh, that was that didn't that was a hard top SLK that never came to the states. Okay. Yeah. Can we open the hood? Let's see what she yeah. looks like. Is this a four cam two valve a uh, four valve? Yes. The plaque, you were at the factory and you, you kind of said it, it really has a different feel. It has more like a race shop, race team feel. It's a pretty intimate group. It's, it's not small, but. You know, it was fascinating. I, the factory was a lot smaller than I thought. Mm -hmm. And it was quiet. And you always think of <laughs> hammers and stamps and pressing, it's not. It's just men assembling engines. And well, here's some footage. This is like 10 years ago. I look like my own son in this video, but uh, I got to watch them and put a couple of pistons in. It, it was just fun to see, and I met, Ro I think his name was Robert, the guy who, uh, whose name was that engine. Yeah, it, it's kind of, uh, that makes it personal to me, you know, Aston Martin does that and a lot of other companies. I, I just like that feel like you kind of know the person who assembled your car. And if there's something wrong with you, you can try. Hey, Larry, come here. Yeah. You know that thing you built nine years ago? Well, it was a road went through the pan. It's your fault. Yeah. But, Whereas if it's the one guy just stood there at his station all day with the, with the air wrench and did the same thing over, put the right. spark plugs in. No, that's what's cool. They actually assemble the whole engine. Follows it all the way it, down. Da, 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 put it in. They take their time. I don't know how many they do a day, maybe two, maybe, maybe three. I'm, I'm not sure, but it's, it's fascinating to watch it. You know, it's like watching a watchmaker put something together. It's pretty cool. The other thing I noticed is if, if you walk the parking lot, it's, it's a little bit, everyone there that works there, not everybody, but most are real enthusiasts, right. which isn't true at a lot of assembly plants. Right, and right. So I remember walking through the parking lot and I looked into this one car and it had these really cool aluminum paddle shifts. I'm like, what are those? They says, oh, that's, that's the head of marketing. He, he just said he wants like F1 style paddle shifts. And it was before they came on the car. Right. He had them fab them up and he was testing them out and then it made their way. Yeah. This I'm, car has them. It's up in the countryside. It's quiet. Yeah. I don't think it's, is as big as this garage and they just make all I'm sure it's probably expanded a lot since then but very very cool okay we can close that down again and it's also you know, just overall AMG and you know it takes a while to earn your chops in the performance right. world you know and so the black series is sort of you know uh, if you could say we are the F1 safety car now, obviously with them being dominant in Formula One itself with their team, but it takes a while for people to think of AMG and Mercedes as bona fide right. performance cars, and they are showing these cars kind of are always sort of the the limit of what they do. They, the new GT uh, just eclipsed the Porsche GT2 RS at the at the Nordschleife, so oh, is that right? Fastest yeah. production car. Wow. Um, and so you know it. 
the thing about racing is you can't fake it, you know. Right. It's stopwatch doesn't lie, doesn't care. And, and uh, what time did it turn, do you know? There's two different configurations that are slightly, that one is 647, one is 643, so. Wow, that's, yeah. you know, that's amazing. Uh, you've done it, right? I have not done a lot. I've been there, but I haven't, I haven't done a, a lap time there. Oh, um, okay. I've been there on the tourist days where you go out and you come back in. You actually have to rent the whole track to do those times. But to put it in perspective, Formula One in 19 didn't go under eight minutes or under seven minutes until 1972. Yeah, that's yeah. so faster a street car faster than a Formula One car in the 70s. Yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty right. That's pretty I'm just trying to imagine you sitting on the bus going around with the tourists. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like seeing Brad Pitt on the Hollywood tour, just kind of waving from the bus all the way over there. I, I, you don't look like a guy that rides on a bus to go around a racetrack. That just makes me laugh. Well, I actually didn't. There are buses on the track at the same time. Yeah. And you can go out in anything. And there are people in full cages with helmets. Oh, yeah. And buses. <laughs> and motorcycles. It's, it's like a free and, and it's people don't realize it's a public road. Yeah. So when you have an accident, you had an accident on this street, which just happens to be, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they, I think they make you pay for the guardrail. Oh yeah, you pay for, you know, yeah. you pay for everything. Yeah, if you damage. Oh yeah, you pay, you pay for everything. You hit a tree, what's this tree? Tree is some, you know, yeah. Endangered. Yeah, yeah, because I, I went there with Jag and I went 841, which was not great, but. That's moving. It was all right. Your heart, what was your heart rate? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. But it, it was certainly fun. I certainly enjoyed it. And it's 13, almost 14 miles. Yeah. I mean, one lap is 14 miles, which is, which is pretty amazing. Well, and the weather can be different when they race the 24-hour there. Right. You know, it can be raining on one side and not on the other. And, and it's, it's like a tunnel. The guardrails are close to the track. There's, you know, and it's super high speed, super high commitment. It's become the benchmark because everyone knows what the numbers are now. Laguna Seca is becoming that a little bit in the States. People are starting to understand, but the Norwich Life of lap times, everyone knows what the sedan, you know, sedans and SUVs, there's classes for everything. And it's sort of, you know, it's in a way, nobody, but you like to know your car could, I right, guess, right. sort of a thing. Now, when you would drive it, you would take people for rides. Did they ever, did you ever sit passenger? I, that, I don't do that. that a, you know, <laughs> Phil Hill, I don't do that. one of my favorite people in the world, was scared to death that, you know, people would come by with uh, some car. Phil, let me take you for a ride. And they would try to show Phil how good they were. <laughs> and he was like scared to death. He was like, it's more frightening than going 200 miles an hour with just some idiot, you know, trying to show up. Watch this, you know. What's well, the worst of all? It's not only are you out of control. They're gonna. They're trying to impress you. R right. And right. so I always tell them. I said, "You can't impress me. You right. can only scare me." Right. And so, <laughs> the converse, though, when people get in, I I like to give them a real thrill. But sometimes sure. they're genuinely terrified. Right. Because right. everyone, unless we don't make them, but everyone at the end of the day at the driving academy goes for a taxi ride. We call them. Right. And sometimes they really don't want to go. And right. I tell them, I say, "Listen, I like you, but I love me. So we're not going to do anything right. that hurts me." And so, but uh, so but you, you've done it all. You've done NASCAR, you've won one there. You raced at Le Mans. Yep. What, what did you drive at Le Mans? At Le Mans, I drove a uh, Porsche uh, in 2000. I was getting ready to drive the Celine, but it hadn't been announced yet. So right. it was kind of a secret op. Uh, ended up not racing the Celine, but then drove the Vipers in uh, in. Oh, 13, the Vipers, yeah, Le Mans, okay. Yeah. So you've really done every form of motorsport, correct? Uh, my height kept me out of the open wheel stuff, but yeah. every type of, of sports cars. You know, I, I did a lot of, uh, you know, stock car stuff. I actually raced in the Bathurst uh, 1000 down oh, under sure. in the V8 supercars. Yeah. Anything sports car related. DTM, German touring car, is one thing I didn't get to do. That was always actually kind of my dream and never never got there. Trans Am, IMSA. So now when you say your height kept you out, is it because, was it like aerodynamics? You're too high in the car, you're out, or are you too big a guy? It was for... literally just like in the in the 90s and i had a big accident where i hurt my legs right. and that actually my flexibility of my ankles was an issue but just packaging uh the 90 lola the steering rack was even smaller guys had a trouble so it was just more you know having enough room to fit sure sure um now uh the cars are, are roomier uh you know justin wilson was my height formula one you don't have anyone over probably about six one right now oh right. lance stroll actually is pretty good size oh okay yeah okay well, let's see, what else do we have? You know, I don't recognize that gear shift lever. When I saw that, is that was that an AMG 
piece? Yeah. That's not a Mercedes piece. It's an AMG piece, and it was just for this Black Series. And the point was, you, you've got to put it into the right mode, but the right. idea was we want to re reinforce that everything's happening up on the steering wheel. But I know you even go like this, like, yeah, because it looks dainty. It you does. make a you dainty kinda, gesture. Yeah. You know, it's so funny because, you know, when I was a kid, I used to love the Mercedes Gullwing. The gear shift was so wimpy. It just looked like a little tiny stick, and I thought, yeah. oh, it can't be very popular. You know, the Hearst shifter was this manly, had a big cue ball, or it had that. Or the knife. You know, the knife. Or the knife, or the T bar. <laughs> and it, it just looked manly, you know? <laughs> and it had this little thing. This just looks so, like a dainty, you put it in there, but then you use the paddles, don't you? Yeah. Well, to be honest, that's kind of actually one of my gripes with Formula One now. They're all power steering. Right. And so there's almost no effort. And, and when you're driving, it's nice because you can run more caster things that actually matter. Right. You don't use as much energy. But when I saw, it was at Montreal, I saw one of the drivers in the rain coming out of that chicane on the front straightaway. And it was one of those great super slow-mo shots. And they were like pinky out. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so, but with, you never have to take your hand off the wheel. Um, and the ergonomics, that's one thing when you get in this car, it's got a, the bottom of the wheel is one of the, was flat. Uh, right, that's not a Mercedes steering wheel. That's a later piece. It's AMG only, same AMG thing. Only, and yeah. the buckets, you know, they still look like a Mercedes, leather covered, but they got a really deep side bolster. Um, so, you know, th this is a car that uh, it's definitely understated, but a lot of people, you know, like the racer uh, endorsement. Right. Um, I know Tony Kanaan had one, sold it, bought it back. Right. Elio Castroneves had one of these. Dale Jr. had one of these. So there's certain cars. Sure. You can promote things all you want, but the good stuff, kind of the word gets out. You right. Know? And this was sort of like a, one of the best kept secrets. And I noticed this has a lot of, is that a carbon fiber look or is that carbon fiber? It's actual carbon fiber. Um, because in 2008, that was early days. Really yeah. expensive. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it, it's real carbon. Um, you know, just for a, you know a, a dress-up look. Um, you know, so what the, did this car cost in 2008? Do you remember? It was 130,000, which was part of the deal. It wasn't again. Pe people were thinking, oh, this, wait, this is a C-class, and so it, people didn't realize how special they were until afterwards. Right, because it was more expensive than the top of the line S-class. Yeah, it was almost double what a C-class was right, at that right. time. So, and so. Right. Um, but uh, in the aftermarket, they, they dipped down as low as 50,000, and now they're, they're back up uh, right. well over 100 again. Yeah. So AMG would then start with standard CLK. They pull the engine and replace it with an AMG engine and transmission. Yep. Rear end as well, or stock rear? Rear end, uh, it's got a different final drive ratio okay. as well, lower, a little bit lower. And then every body panel is different. This was uh, early, you know, because it used to be they were they would take the car when it was done, an AMG version of not the Black Series, right. and they would do what they could. Starting with the C class that I think was 2000 and uh, a little bit after this one, this might right. have been what kicked it off. They said, why don't we branch these things off earlier in their cycle? So that was when the AMG, the regular AMGs, non-Black Series, started having different tracks, different wheel bases, different body panels, and so forth. Because again, to sort of you know keep up with the arms. And race. it's interesting because I don't think Amazon ad for AMG. They kind of sold themselves. I mean, you saw it on the cover of the magazines, Road and Track, Car and Driver, all the stories. But I don't think they ever saw a commercial for AMG, at least certainly not in the early days. No, I think they've done some recently, but those are the first uh, main Yeah, because I used to think, oh, that can't be a black series. It's not black. <laughs> I thought it meant yeah. they're all black and yep. high performance black. Like a know. black card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so then, then I was finally figured it out. Oh, OK. And I don't recognize those wheels. Are those the original wheels that came on it? They as are well? the original wheels. and. Uh, in some of the later ones, you could get a, a black version. Not the, the CLK only came with these silver. It's a forged, forged right, wheel, right. Um, multi-spoke. This is definitely kind of a European, German look. You know, it's a nice shape. It holds up well. If you told the uninitiated this is a brand new car, it, it would, they would not go, oh no, look at the, like a Countach looks like 1980. It just looks, right. oh, you know, even people who don't know, know that's not what cars look like now. But this is aerodynamic and sleek and it's really an attractive shape. And, I mean, you could, this body style could sell right now just like this, don't you think? It doesn't look any different. 
Yeah, it's it, definitely timeless. And, uh, you know, again, it had a real carbon spoiler, which uh, right. from the factory, a lot of people with my Black Series, it actually had the raised rear wing. Yeah. And a lot of people say, this is all aftermarket. I said, no, this is this yeah. is from the, from the factory. Well, that's what I like. Good design is timeless, you know. My 53 Hudson Hornet still looks good. Yeah. You know, because it looks like people, it looks like a giant Audi TT, you know. Good design just kind of goes and cyclical. It goes, comes around again, you know. Very pretty. Can we, uh, can we take this one for a ride? Absolutely. Let's give it a shot. And again, there's no stripper inside. It's all, it's got sound deadening and all of that stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Even with their, their, uh, all their cars, Mercedes says it's, it still has to be a Mercedes. Right. They're not willing to compromise on that. And that's what made me laugh when I got my SLR because it had an electric seat. I go, you know, my ass moves an inch and a half. I don't need a motor. I can just do that. But no, this does not have. Does not. Have oh, it does yeah, not. Yeah. Oh, good for them. Good for them. Let's take this for a ride. Now I can do what I want. thing needs to make it a, a modern car is probably the dual clutch. The transmission is probably the only thing about it that might seem a little dated, but even that is pretty good. Sounds fantastic. It feels very precise. Steering is excellent. I love how it hunts. You know what I mean? By that I mean uh, you realize you're, like, you're zeroing in on something. It's like you have your eyes set somewhere and this car is just going right there. You know, wherever your eyes go, the car goes. It feels like that. It feels very precise. I always like this kind of setup, you know, where you have all the luxury features, but you still have incredible performance. Because a lot of times you really can't get both, you know, at least not in the old days. You know, the 6.3 Mercedes of the late 60s, that's one of my favorite cars, because when I worked at the car dealership, we would get those, and I would have to take them in, you know, run errands to go fill them with gas, and I always take the long way. And they were so incredibly powerful and fast. They were like the American performance cars, but with better braking. Oh, no, boy, it just hit, yeah. It, it just, it just kind of claws in the road. I love that it's two-wheel drive. I'm not a big four-wheel drive guy. I like it, but I like to have fun. I like to hang the tail out a little bit. And, you know, as I said, I'm not a racer. I just enjoy driving. And if you had to have one car, this would certainly be a good choice because you could use it to go to dinner and, you know, do things like that and do grown-up stuff. And then when you want to be 12 years old, you do what I'm doing right now. It's, the nice, it's a nice size for a car. You know, inside you get a big car feel, a big car look, but it's quite compact. As you heard, Tommy Kendall's got quite a resume. He's an incredible driver. If you've never heard of him, that's because it's your fault, because uh, he's in the record books a lot. Uh, Le Mans, NASCAR, I mean, he did everything. He's really, really good. And, uh, and he can explain it well. You know, he doesn't talk like a know-it-all, but he talks like a guy who's been there and had the experience, and, and he can pass it on to you without uh, looking down on you, which actually does look down on me because he's taller and he's better but that's okay. <laughs> but uh, good guy, nice guy. And you know, when you're behind the wheel of this thing, the nose just drops right off. So when you look out the windshield, it's like you just see road, which is kind of cool. It's not like you're looking down a long hood. And when you put your foot in it, there's a bit of that torque converter lag, but that's all right. That's no big deal. This would be fabulous with a manual gearbox, although, I don't know if they ever made manual gearboxes in 2008 in Europe, but it would have been a nice idea. Makes you smile, boy, when you put your foot in this thing. It just feels plain. 
transit on the road. You know, it feels it feels lower than the standard Mercedes, and it probably rides a little bit harsher. But right, you know, I'd say, I wouldn't say harsh. I would say firm. It rides firmer. But I like that. I like that feeling of being well planted in the road, so to speak. You, know? you could get in a lot of trouble with this. When Tommy said he drove this from Detroit to Oklahoma, I believe him. You can take this thing anywhere. It's quiet, but it's still exciting. There's a lot of money. What well, so did he say it was? 132000 in 2008? What would that be today? Maybe 205, something like that? 210? Still, you're getting a hell of a car. I mean, you saw in the little video how these engines were put together. And I love the fact that they've done it one at a time and one guy builds the whole motor. I think that's really fantastic. You know, it's really terrific that these companies like Mercedes-Benz, Jaguar, General Motors, Ford, they all have their heritage centers where they, they keep their iconic cars on display and ready to be used at a moment's notice like this one. I mean, this looks like a brand new car, but it's what, 15 years old, something like that. So, I mean, it, it's pretty amazing. And I'm, I'm glad they're kind enough to let us borrow them, so I don't like to take advantage, come back with shredded tires and empty gas tanks. Here. But when you put your foot in a watch, you know, you know, you feel like you're in one of those transporter movies when you're driving this thing. You know, it's, yeah. it's a great car to drive quickly. You look like an expectant father waiting to... <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, take you back to your hooligan days? Well, you know, it's really great. You know, if you had to have one car that did everything, yeah. this, this would really be a good example because, you know, you can talk on the phone, it's fine. You put the windows up, it's quiet, and it makes all the right noises. It, you know, it's just so planted. It just, it just... And steering, the, it's almost like you look and it goes. That's right, it's like you're hunting for prey. You see a Porsche, oh, you want to eat it. You know, you pull up next to it. Well, Tommy, thank you very much for doing this. Really appreciate it. I know you're busy. Tommy's available at fine racetracks everywhere. He's been, <laughs> you've been to all of them, Lamal, Indianapolis, everything. So thanks for bringing your expertise and your uh, driving skills to this thing, because I, I can't make this car do what it can do. Uh, you're the guy for that. But thank you very much, my friend. My pleasure. Okay. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>